In this video, we're going to review the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, uh, which <clears throat> tells us a lot about acid base equilibria uh, between a acid and its conjugate base, for instance. So for a weak acid, uh, we can think of, uh, for instance, something like acetic acid, uh, for instance. Uh, <clears throat> but this is the equation here, and so in another video, uh, you can see how this is derived uh, and also um, how to look at uh, how to draw titration curves. Uh, but so this equation tells us what the pH is for if we know the pKa for a weak acid or a weak base for that, for that matter. Uh, and we know the ratio of the uh, concentrations of the conjugate base and the acid. Okay? And so if you recall, we can actually get these data, we can get this information such as the pK from a titration curve where on the y-axis we have the pH and on the x-axis we have <coughs> equivalence of base or we can actually just plot this in concentration of uh, hydroxide uh, if we're titrating with base or uh, if we're doing the opposite uh, where we're titrating with acid we can also do that too. In this case we have equivalence of base so we're titrating some weak acid with sodium hydroxide uh, for instance and we're looking for the pKa. So we have the equivalence points and so there's an equivalence point at zero and an equivalence point at one. And so that's when you have, uh, when the base uh, is at one equivalent with the weak acid. So that means if we have, for instance, if we have one mole or one, let's say we have one, 50 millimolar of acid in a test tube, when we add 50 micromolar or 50 millimolar, excuse me, of hydroxide, either a sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide or your favorite hydroxide, um, strong hydroxide, I should say, uh, then this is equal to one equivalent. Okay? If we have 25 millimolar, for instance, so this is one equivalent or one EQ. If we had 25, we only added 25 millimolar hydroxide though, this would be half an equivalent. All right? So we have what's called an equivalence point. So this is where you see these asymptote behavior uh, at the, where the equivalent is 1.0, 0.0, and you have the half equivalence point, which is also very important because this is how you determine what the pKa is. Okay, so at the half equivalence point, if we draw a line from 0 0.5 equivalence up to our plot and then project that line onto the y-axis, which is pH, uh, we can estimate that our pKa for this is about, um, we'll say, 8.4. Okay, all right, so that comes out in the math here because what we're saying is at the equivalent, at the half equivalence point, at half equivalence point, we've added enough uh, base that A minus is equal to HA. Okay? And if A minus is equal to HA, then we plug this in here. A minus over HA, if they're equal, is equal to 1. And we get pH equals pKa plus log of 1. And the log of 1 is 0. So that means at the half equivalence point, pH is equal to pK. And that's what we're doing by looking at the uh, at the titration curve here. We can also figure this out from the titration curve. Okay? So, another important thing uh, to look at is not just the pKa, but also we typically use weak acids or weak bases as buffers for biological systems. Uh, buffering is very important because, uh, particularly in biological systems, because there are a lot of protons, so hydrogen ions uh, fl uh, flying around in a lot of different chemical processes. And so what you don't want to have happen is that the pH wildly fluctuates because uh, pH control uh, 
in biological systems is really important for uh, keeping the reactions going and also keeping an organism alive. Uh, think about if you stuck your finger, uh, for instance, in concentrated hydrochloric acid, you wouldn't be very happy about that. It would hurt a lot. And if you did that for a long enough time, um, that would you would cease to have, for instance, a finger, uh, and your biological process would be fairly useless there, right? So, <clears throat> biologic, so, biolog uh, so biological organisms require what's called buffers in order to keep the pH within a reasonable value. So, uh, as I stated in a, another video, physiological pH we typically think of as pH 7.3, but there are a range of pHs that uh, organisms can survive at, um, depending on, uh, especially depending on their metabolisms or uh, depending on their bacteria or humans or whatnot. Uh, but at any rate, they need to be controlled even within those ranges, okay? So let's say we're using this, um, this weak acid or uh, weak base here, uh, since it has a pK of 8.4, uh, as a buffer, okay? So what we're looking for then would be the buffering range. And so the buffering range extends plus or minus one uh, pK unit. So we would expect, for instance, that the buffering range would extend up to 9.4 on the basic side, because 8.4 plus 1 is 9.4, and then on the acidic side, 7.4. All right, so notice how this line is pretty, it doesn't have this asymptotic behavior, but it has a very slow, uh, gradual increase as you increase the amount of base. And so what that is is that the buffer is resisting, uh, is resisting changes in the pH um, around the pKa, around plus or minus one, uh, pKa plus or minus one, right? So this is what we call our buffering range. So and so to identify this on a titration curve, we're looking for the plateaus, or the, or the flatter, or the very uh, slowly uh, increasing parts of the titration curve. So the buffering range in this case ranges from 7.4 to 9.4. So plus or minus one pK, all right? And so the other thing that we want to think about when we look at the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is if the pH, for instance, is greater than the pKa, or less than the pK, what are the rel what is the ratio of this term in here? So this, this is the pKa, then to the right, okay, to add more base, so, or above, if you want to think of in terms of pKa, if we're above the pKa, so the pH is above the pKa, so let's say we're at pH 9, right? So if we're at pH 9, then what that means, then, is that we're above the pKa, 9 is greater than 8.4. So we're going to have more of this, we're going to have more conjugate base than we will have acid in terms of concentration. If it's less, it's going to be the opposite, right? So let's say we pick, uh, we'll pick just 8. So 8 is less than 8.4, so we're going to be more acidic. Therefore, there will be more concentration of HA will be greater than the concentration of the conjugate base. And over here, the concentration of HA will be less than the concentration of conjugate base. So conceptually, what we want to know then, uh, what we can decide from that is, do we have more acid or base? If we know the pH and the pKa, we can quickly figure out, are we favoring uh, formation of the conjugate base or the acid in those conditions?